Hello, I'm Scarlett and I'm going to show you how to recycle your old uh, tea light containers. Well, obviously you start with a uh, used up tea light cup just, um, and just uh, take out your, your clip. If there's any extra wax in the bottom, you can kind of scrape it out a little bit. Try not to dig around in there too much because especially if they're, you know, fragile uh, aluminum containers, they can bend a lot, but, uh, okay, so you need wax, obviously. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can get it. You can just buy it in blocks from the, the craft store. Um, this is just a plain, clear, white block. Um, that can be a little expensive. Uh, you can find old, used wax in, in chunks. You can find this also at the craft store, sort of the powdery version. Um, you can also get just old, used candles from family, relatives, you know, shoved in the back of your closet, stuff you haven't used uh, for a while. Um, if you go to Goodwill, you can probably grab some candles. Uh, keep in mind that if you have a colored candle, it may not have the color all the way through the wax. It may just be a coating on the outside. So um, you ha might want to kind of scrape at it and, and kind of see that it's got just a green coating and then white on the inside, which is handy for me because I like working with white wax instead of colored wax. I think the more colors you get into, the more complicated things get. and all of your equipment ends up with, you know, different colors on it. And I just like to use the white color, so I'm just going to scrape off the, the green and throw this chunk into the pot, I think. Uh, another thing you're obviously going to need is wick. Um, and I would recommend actually buying a specific wick. Don't just try to use some kind of string that you have, because um, you don't necessarily know what's in that. And, and the wick that you get from the store is specifically designed to be used in candles. Um, there's different thicknesses, um, there's different styles. This doesn't have wire in it. Um, this one here does. If you're going to use one that doesn't have wire in it, it's a good idea to dip it in the melted wax and get it to kind of be stiff for you um, beforehand. So just kind of dip it in to the wax you know, and then uh, pull it out and uh, just kind of stretch it out on, on you know, your surface. Uh, obviously a surface that you don't mind getting wax on until it kind of dries and um, watch your fingers so that you don't burn yourself, but and then it'll be nice and stiff for you to, to work with. Okay, I'm going to go uh, show you some of my tools that I have. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you are making candles of any kind is that all of the tools you have are probably going to end up with a semi-permanent coating of wax on it. So chances are you're going to have to use it. Something that It's a good idea to use something that you don't mind reserving entirely just for making candles. Um, I have that this tray here. Um, that is an old tray. Um, I have a, a butter knife here that is an old butter knife that I use for all my scraping and, uh, you know, emptying out the old wax from the, the tins, scraping out the tins, and um, as a mixing tool, actually, too, for when I'm dealing with the wax, the hot wax. Uh, you can also get special colors. Um, I you know, you chip off a little bit. And a little actually goes quite a long way. Uh, these are pretty concentrated colors. You can get them different kinds. I have a pliers, and that's a lot of, uh, for preparing the wicks and uh, also sometimes for grabbing things, you know, that are that have gotten lost in the, in the pot. Um, if you're going to, if you're not going to be recycling your tips, or your, your, your clips, they actually have the, you know, the clips that you can buy. Um, and you also have clips with the wicks right in them, which is pretty convenient, saves you a lot of time. But uh, if you ask me, if you're recycling your, your tea lights, you're not all that interested in saving time. Um, 
Another thing that is really useful for me is this, uh, well, it's broken, but it's uh, an old needle. And I use this a lot for when I'm recycling the, uh, the clips. Uh, I just use it to pry open and uh, clean out the, the old clips so that I can use them again. I, uh, I have an old loaf tin. You can use an old tin can. Um, and that's just for the drop wax when, uh, when you're done with a batch and all you have a little bit left and you want to save it or you just need a place to dump it. It's a good, good idea to have an extra container that you can uh, pour the wax in so you can clean out your stuff and then let it dry. Maybe use it again later. Um, I use a double boiler. I don't think you have to, but I find it useful because then I can take my, my old coffee tin, pour it, makes it really easy. Um, you can just pick stuff up at, at Goodwill for, you know, a couple of cents. And uh, there you go. You've got all your tools you need, really. If you want to recycle your old um, wick clips, you know, like, like this, um, you can. I have one word for you. T-D-U-S. But it can be done. Um, I've got a bunch of them here that I've used before. Um, this one I've already pried open with my needle. So you kind of see that it's wider and ready for the wick. Here I've got the uh, end of the wick that I've uh, dipped in wax and it's all dried and ready to go. Just kind of push on that end to make it go in and then try to measure that up. Push that in. Oop, that didn't work. I think I need to pry this open further. There. And take the end of my wick. Make that kind of a shape of the thing. Push it in. That's pretty good in there. It doesn't have to be, you know, majorly solid. Um, and then just measure it to roughly, you know, you want it to be tall enough in the cup to come out. So I'd say maybe about here. I'll cut it. So there we've got a, a nice wick clip ready for, ready for deployment. If you're working with a different kind of, of wick, if you're working with a smaller wick, I've got, I've got two different sizes here. I have the, this one is the wax covered wick with no wire. This is the wick with a wire in it that's not got wax in it. This one's smaller. Um, I, I know that there's differences in the kinds of wicks that you can use and I know that there's different reasons. With tea lights, personally, I don't really see a big difference because they're just such small things and um, the wire does the same thing as the wax does. It makes it kind of stand up, although if you're working with like a taller candle besides a, uh, a tea light, the wire is really helpful to getting it to stay up because um, obviously the wax on the wax dipped wick is going to melt when you put fresh hot wax into your candle. So this kind of wick is helpful for if you're making bigger candles. But it also works because some of my holes in my uh, little clips are too small and I'm just going to put that in there. But that kind of goes through really easy. So just simple solution. Just grab a pliers and, uh, and squeeze. Um, and if you have something sticking out the bottom like that, like I have a little piece of, I don't know if you can really see the little wire that's sticking out, um, that's going to make it difficult for standing up in the cup. So just kind of snip that off and, and tuck that in. Okay, now here comes the fun part, the moment of truth, as they say. Let's see if I can do this while I'm holding my camera on the other hand. Um, the actual pouring of the wax. So I've got my my uh, container full of wax here. You can kind of see it sloshing around in there. Um, and then 
You want to fill it almost completely to the top. You can even touch the edge of the top when you're pouring. Let's see here. This might be... Okay. And if it goes over, don't freak out. If it spills, that's what the uh, cookie sheet's for. And you want to do only a few at a time because you don't want to start drying but whoops, before you can get your wicks in there. So here we go. And then just pop that right in. Hold that. Make sure it stays nice and steady. Here they are. Um, just wanted to show you that wax does shrink as it dries. So I don't know if you can kind of see how there's a little bit of a ditch there, a divot. Um, you can go back and um, fill in some things as they're drying, as they're finishing up here. Uh, a little bit on that one and a little bit on that one. So just kind of keep an eye on them and once you get them how you like them, let them set up and dry. And there you go. You've got all your your candles all set. Um, don't forget to check out the bottom of your candle. Make sure there's no uh, wax on it. Um, peel that off. That way you're protecting the uh, container that you're going to be putting it in. The wick is going to be too tall. Uh, you want to clip it off. Make sure that it's not going to be too tall. So about there is good probably. Maybe a little bit shorter. You don't want it too long. So then there you go. Light it up. And you made yourself a batch of tea lights.